I stopped hearing overnight. It was fall. Now it's winter, but at the time it was fall. And it was a chill night and I was coming back from my grandpa's house. It's in a very country place, which a lot cold. If you ever went to the country, you know it's so it was freezing. So I got home and I noticed that my hearing was a little weird. So I, I but I didn't really care for it because I thought it was the cold. Because here's the thing. Let's say that my going to and going back to my grandpa's house was not the most legally correct in traffic. Let's say my dad owns a truck with two places and the space behind the car. I don't know about cars in Portuguese. Don't expect me to know it in English. So I have the, the car has these two places in the front and the rest of the car is for the cargo. Except the cargo was me. <laughs> so I thought, hey, it's cold. It's probably cold. Nah, I'm just gone to sleep. And it will be on by tomorrow. Then I woke up in the middle of the night. That's when you run my mind. I don't know how my brain works. Anyway, I had stopped hearing nothing. I'm not, not exactly nothing. I didn't stop hearing out together, but it felt like you know when you have those BS headsets, headphones, and, and, and just felt like I was with that that canceled the noises. So here I go, wake up my mother. Hey, take me to the hospital. Something's really wrong with my ears. It was both of them. Lucky me, since it was the AM, nobody was there. I was the first one. I wanted to get some coffee because. I needed it because I, I was already fanfictioning in my mind what was going on. I thought, hey, I, I caught something on that truck, on that cargo place, something's wrong. I know it is also the same part of me, thought, hey, maybe it's nothing, you know. No, it could just be something warm, we don't have to freak out. Sure, you stop hearing in the middle of the night and I'm gonna be calm, having anxiety. Of course that will happen. Like the doctor, she took that little magnifying earring glass, which is the weirdest shit I ever seen in my life. That's a lie, I've seen weirder shit. But that that thing right there just feels like just seems like a torture thing, you know? It doesn't feel like you're gonna open it and just keep opening and opening. This could also be for another medical thing that goes somewhere else. But back to my ear. The doctor then looked at my ear and went, <gasps> I started to, to think, okay, I'm screwed. I'm in a Dr. House episode. There is a bug in my ear and this is an actual and almost extinct bug and it laid eggs. So I'll just have to live with this bug in my ear because we can kill it because we, have, we already kill most of the nature. So what is gonna happen? Then, then she stopped, looked at me and said, it's earwax. Okay, for all the reactions, to earwax. That was that, that that's not a normal reaction. You know how boring duck is your ship so you see earwax and go <gasps> the thing about it it's not the thing about this video is not really about the hearing thing. After using the medicine for a week, yeah, everything went back to normal. I'm back listening. Sorry to disappoint. Why did my brain went straight to there? Why do we picture worst case scenarios? Uh, why didn't I think about wax? It's something that's already in my ear. There's something that my, happens to my grandpa all the time and it has to clean. So why did my mind go straight to Dr. Howell's almost extinct bug laying next in my ear? Then I looked it up because I'm a curious girl and I discovered it. It's a thing. It's called catas catastrophe Pretend it is if it's not. Not only I found that out, I found out how to stop it. Yes, I'm reading you with everybody here. Okay, this is from the insider. This is not as catastrophic thinking. You know, that's easier to pronounce. Why you didn't say that to me before? It's a habit people get into for various reasons and it can be difficult to break. But it can be done by learning to be logical and calm. Oh boy, you're so talking to the wrong person. And having a support network of sensible people you can call when you feel out of control. I hope you're, you're talking about a therapist, because if it's about my friends or family, hey, I've been
been going to the worst case scenario about things all the time. Okay, then stop. That's how you solve mental illness in my family. You can see now why I'm this amount of crazy. Nobody is born a catastrophizer. Man, they keep making up words and they just won't stop making up words. It's a protective mechanism. Blah, 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 blah. Things you can deduce on yourself. Things you already know but don't do. Practice and persistence to learn to slow down and go to logic first. Oh, two of the things we already know but don't do. You know the, the worst thing about going to work case scenarios is when they have fundament because something happened before and you're like, this might happen again, but then you go, no, everything's fine. You can purchase this thing because nothing's gonna happen, nothing ever happens. You know, you've been delaying this for a long time. And then you, when you finally go, hey, I'll break the habit, then you say that you will write. What am I gonna do if a bug actually goes into my ear? I'll go, no, that's just earwax. It's probably different than earwax. But what if it isn't? That never happened. How, how would I know? Because I won't be catastrophizing. Every time I, I move on and think that I'm being psychotic, my psychotic actually was right. How, how do we deal with that when our psychiatrism, psychiatrism thing, crazy mind warns you about something but then you think you're overreacting when you're not actually overreacting? Where's your solution for that, the insider? Well, that was today's video. We are short with random information, bugs and catastrophic thinking. I hope I'll see you next time with no bugs in my